Hallelujah. So please don't sleep. Say Masitalala. In Jesus' name. Because as we read the word of God last Sunday, we saw that the devil always looks for the word that is not received. And he steals it quickly. And what is stolen is what we have usually prayed in Job 20 verse 15, that he has swallowed down riches. He has swallowed down riches. Where does he get these riches? It is the an accepted word of God that is released towards you. Now, when you don't see it, the devil knows the potential. He knows the potential of the word of God. So he steals it. And because the word of God produces miracles, those are the things that are stolen. And when a person who worships the devil goes to the devil and bows to him, an ambiwa, an atakam toto, then the devil begins to give what he stole from you. That is why I'm saying don't sleep. Because God is a farmer. And you, if you look at the strategy of God, the strategy of God after plowing the field, the way he explains farming, they used to scatter seeds. The farmer used to scatter seeds because the farms were big. So they would not go planting one wheat seed. There are too many. So they would scatter the seed. And sometimes the seed would go beyond the reach of the farm and fall sometimes on the, on the wayside. Sometimes it would fall on the stony ground and it would fall on even on tiny bushes. But we saw from the scriptures that when God who is a farmer sows his word, it falls on four types of ground. And when we look, I just recapping a little bit, when we look at the three grounds, as long you are in the category of the three grounds, the wayside, the stony ground, the thorny ground, you will never produce fruit. There will never be fruit. There will never be fruit. As long as you are a wayside believer, the word comes and you don't receive it immediately. As long as you are the stony ground believer, where the word falls, but when persecution comes, you are offended and you let go the word. Then if you are at the thorn believer, thorny ground believer, where the word comes, but the cares, the worries, the concerns of this world are too many, and the deceitfulness of riches are too many, the last of the world is too many, they choke the word, therefore the word does not produce. It is not you who produces, it is the word that produces. Bonus, if you will. So as long as you are the three ground type, you will never receive a harvest. Just know that. Just know that. Number two. I'm just reca recapping. Now, you will realize God does not determine the ground you are. God does not determine the ground you are. It is you who chooses which ground. Now, if you decide now that you'll be distracted by a child, you'll be distracted by somebody going to the toilet, you'll be distracted by somebody who is doing something, then you have chosen your ground. You have chosen which ground you are. So God does not choose the ground you are. Him, his work, he comes and scatters the seed. And right now, he's at the business of scattering seed from the time we began service. He's scattering the seed. So it is up to you. It is up to you. Number three, poor soil will always, in God's kingdom, there is no poor soil that yields a funny harvest. It is either good soil that produces a bumper harvest or no soil at all. So God is not in between there. He has, a, he has standards he has set. He said the only way, as a believer, you will produce 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, it is when you are the fertile or the good soil. So poor soil, there is no harvest. And the poor soils are those. Number four, the seed is the word of God. Amen. Seed is not your money. The seed is the word of God. When God is speaking here, he is talking about the seed is the word of God. And I want to give you a few things about the word of God. The, the, the seed of which is the word of God, has got God's potential in it. Every seed carries the potential to become 
what it was created to be. Every seed. So the seed of the word of God carries God's potential and therefore you need to check on the results you are getting because most of the results we get, they are not God's result. Because if God was to produce after his kind, God is great. Therefore his results are great. God is mighty. His results are mighty. God is terrible. His results are terrible. Whatever God plants in you, if it falls on the good soil, it will produce a great, a mighty, a terrible harvest. Because that is our God. That is our God. So the seed of God has got potential. Number two, it produces God kinds of results. Some of the results that we produce, remember Moses. He was given the word of God. He was told, when you go to Pharaoh, drop the rod. Drop the rod. When he dropped the rod, it turned into a snake. Then the magician also, they dropped the rods. And they became small snakes. But the power of the seed of the word of God, it swallowed all the other snakes. Bonus, if you will. Your testimony or the results that you get should swallow every other testimony given in the world. Bonus, if you will. Any testimony you get from God, it cannot and it should not be replicated. That is why even when they replicated the snakes, they were swallowed by the, the snake that was created. Is your miracle, what you are producing from the seed of the word of God, can it swallow what is being replicated by the enemy? Because you need to, that is God challenging us, that we need to receive the word of God in a different way. Now, a farmer who plants maize and in big scale, they know the value of that seed. They protect that seed. They watch over that seed. They even put, I know, I remember we used, when we used to do a shop business, because we used to sell maize, we would put a certain powder to preserve that maize that is it's not eaten. Now, when you are the ground, you need to decide whether the seed of the word of God can be replicated if it can be replicated. Now, the miracle that pastor received from receiving the word of God, that shout to the Lord, because when you shout, the walls of Jericho come down, the doctors could not be able to replicate the miracle that happened. Because the doctor looked and said, they are cancerous growth. They were look, making her look like he has a womb. And they only said, this is a serious operation, and there is also a possibility they can grow back. But without a knife, without a cut, by receiving the seed of the word of God, it produced a miracle that doctors up to today cannot be able to replicate. When Modaka was sick and he was all yellow and he was small, we went to all the doctors and the last thing they wrote was P-U-S-H, push. In other words, pray now. As a doctor, when I look at this child, the only way this child can be healed is pray until something happens. And that's what we did. We went back home and we said, we are getting into prayer. We are receiving every word that we have gotten in our heart now. We are mixing it with the faith until we get a miracle. Now, the healing that took place when God showed her in a dream and gave her an instruction, let give that child a piriton. Can you imagine piriton? Mumeenda Kenyatta, you have gone to Aga Khan. We had gone to Mpisha. We went to Kenyatta private wing. Eventually, we went to the private side of the private doctors, Nairobi Apo. We went there. The last doctor was a liver specialist. She looked at it and said, pray until something happened. So we took the word of God that Elijah was a man like us. He had the same weaknesses like us, but he prayed earnestly until there was rain in Israel. We got into earnest prayer. Earnest prayer. Lord, you are the healer. You have already, according to the scriptures, you have already healed this man. Manifest that healing here on earth. And we pushed in prayer until a piriton appeared in the dream. 
So those people who say that medicine is wrong, it is not right. For you to say that I cannot go to the hospital, the Bible says laughter is as good as a medicine. A merry heart does good like medicine. The healing of our son was connected to an instruction by God in a dream, but he still referred to medicine. So usikuja hapo kasema ati mimi ni miokoka siendagi hospitali. Bwana asifiwe. The word produced a miracle that even when we took him back to the doctor, the doctor looked and said, we can't understand what has happened. There is something that has happened to this liver that we cannot be able to understand, but it is as new as it was even before. Bwana asifiwe. The word produces God kind of results. So if the word that you are receiving is not producing God kind of results, I will keep on saying it is, there is a problem. And it is not God, it is you. Hallelujah! Every seed of God is loaded with God's greatness. Every seed of God. Because God follows the principle of what he applied here on earth. You know, God does not break his rules. He said in Genesis chapter 8 verse 22, As long as the earth remains, as long as you wake up in the morning and you are stopping on the ground, there is a covenant, there is a principle that can never be broken. Seed time. Seed time. And harvest time or harvest Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. As long as the earth remains, there is a principle he has released that when you see the day, you will see the night. When you see the cold, you will see summer. Hallelujah. When you see a seed go to the ground, if that ground is good, there will definitely be a harvest. Now, our God is a good farmer. The question is again and again, are you a good ground to receive the word of God? That's the question. Because God wants to do things that cannot be replicated. That when you share a testimony with a guy from Illuminati and you tell them that God gave me this kind of a job and that's how it came. And I I see God in that. I see God in that. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Why does God talk about seed time? Because when he created Adam, God was not going to create another Adam. He put a seed inside Adam. And he was like, Adam, Eve, for there to be other humans, I have released a law. And this is the law that will operate. If you want to see children, plant seed at the right place at the right time. Some of you have planted wild seeds. And may your young men here and the young, the older men here, may you not ever plant a wrong seed outside there. In Jesus' name from now. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God has set a law that even the devil cannot work against it. He says, now he looks and takes advantage. He looks at a young man and he puts lust and he now goes and he looks for another young girl who is not married and now they put a seed there and your child is born and so the devil takes advantage by creating no marriage which can create disability in some situations. Are we together? But our God is a, a second chance. Hallelujah. But what I'm trying to say is that the word of God is a seed. And he will not come and do a miracle any other way. Every miracle he'll do, he will do by first releasing a seed. The seed of the word of God. You receive that word. That's why when he found the blind man, he asked them, what do you want me to do for you? And they said, if you can only heal us. Do you believe I'm able to do this? They said, yes. He asked a question. Do you believe? He released a seed. A seed that was to challenge what they believed or what they had had before. And they said yes. And therefore when they say, they say, according to your faith, may it be done. So the seed that had been planted in those men, when they heard stories of what Jesus had had, created a miracle in them. So our God will never break his rules. Even today, when he wanted to come down and save man, he did not come down as God himself. He could have created a body. He just appears here like a, a ghost and suddenly he has a body and he says, I'm Jesus Christ, I have come to save you. And he grabs us from the devil and he says, now you are all saved. But what did he do? He said, I set a principle. A principle that I myself cannot, be, cannot break. So if I need to bring a savior to these people 
And because a savior can only be somebody who is like them, somebody who can walk on this earth, somebody who can carry the blood of, I mean, the body of flesh, I can only put a seed. So he looked for a lady and he put a seed. And remember, when God came to Mary, he said, Blessed art thou above all women. And the next thing he says, You shall conceive. Now, Mary responded in a different way. Mary did not receive because the conception was coming through the word. It was the word that was spoken. And he spoke to Mary and he said, you shall conceive a child by the Holy Spirit. And the child that will be conceived shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. And what did Mary say? May it be done according to to your heart made and according to what you have said. She received the seed of the word of God. There would have not been Jesus Christ in Mary if she, she did not receive the word of God. So after nine months, the process of God and the process of man here on earth, a child was born. So what happens? God comes here and he releases a seed into you. Now you carry this, that seed into you. You take care of that seed. And after the appointed time of the seed, which could be one day, it could be one month, it could be five years, it could be ten years, eventually you produce that seed. And the word becomes flesh. Mary carried a seed in her. It was weird carrying a seed that you don't know. Where will I be? Yeah, how will I get this child? But I'm like, I have a seed. I have a child. She goes to Joseph and tells him, I have a child. Then God tell her, get out of here. Go to Elizabeth. Because if you stay with Joseph, he might begin to doubt. He might begin to be talked by the devil. and be He may start having some considerations. But what happens? Mother, I mean, Mary had to go to Elizabeth. To the place where he found a same like-minded woman. That even when they met, the seed in them leaped. Why? Because they knew we are like and this person that have met, they will not kill our seed. So when you receive the word of God, you must protect it. You must walk around with people that will build on that seed. You must live with people who will encourage you on what you are carrying. Because they are seed killers. There is somebody you can tell. They are, we have had counseling processes where somebody says, my husband, we agreed we are getting two children. Now I'm pregnant with the third one and he's suggesting abortion. And what do we do? Woman, go to a place where this cannot happen. Go to a like-minded person who cannot tell you to abort. Because probably if Mary stayed around, and I'm not saying that Joseph was a bad guy, probably if he stayed around a long time, guys would have started speaking. Joseph, there is nothing like this has ever happened. Now you are trying to tell this stomach that is bulging here, no man did this. And so, you have to protect your seed. Hallelujah! And every seed of the word of God is predetermined. It will definitely produce. Can you say produce? The Bible says that when the word of God leaves the mouth of God, it will not go back to him empty. It will not. So if God said you are healed, if you refuse to take that healing, that healing will be taken by somebody else. Because the word of God has to heal. The word of God has to heal. If God has released a job and you refuse to receive it, let me tell you, somebody else will get that job. If God releases an idea and that idea you refuse to work on it and bring it to production, it will be taken by somebody else. Because our God is releasing seeds every day. Because he has a purpose. The reason why God gave seed, because seed carries continuity. Hallelujah. Seed is the only thing that carries continuity. If you want to have a continuity of maize, you have to preserve maize. You can't take the plant and keep it somewhere for a while, then plant it again. You have to use the seed. Hallelujah. Now I was looking. at farming and I did some little mathematics because many of us are not producing the capacity of God the Bible says 30 times 
60 times, 100 times. That word you get, the way you receive it. For example, when God, you believe, you see healing. That healing is able to be replicated 30 times to many others. That by the time you receive your healing and you share your testimony, 30 other people can receive the same healing. 60 other people can receive that healing. A hundred other people can receive that healing. Because when God releases a seed, he releases a seed that will bring multiplication. Now, I was doing some little mathematics. I said I like mathematics. I looked at one seed of maize, and I've shared here before. Now, if you plant a good seed of maize, and the conditions are good, it is most likely to produce two sheaves. Now, when I say these two sheaves, are able to produce each at least 600 seeds from one. So we can say when one seed of maize is planted on a good ground, it can actually produce 1,200 seeds. Amen. Just one seed. Look at that ability. Earthly ability here on earth, just put on the ground. One maize seed suddenly produces 1,200 seeds. Now, do you know how many seeds need to be planted so that you get a harvest, so that from that harvest, you can plant an acre? You only need to plant 40 seeds in the ground. 40. Maindi, mbesabu mbegu moja, mbili, tatu, ne, tano, mpaka 40. You get a farm and you say, I want to plant. Somebody may look at you and say, you are foolish. But they find you, you have planted 40 seeds. And then they ask you, why have you planted these 40 seeds? Because in three months, I want to plant in one acre. Somebody may ask you, can this be enough? But 40 seeds are able to produce seeds that can be planted in one acre. Because it takes 2,000, I mean 50,000 seeds in one acre of maize. Now, can you imagine, from 40 only, you do one acre. That means if you want 10 acres, you do 400 seeds. If you want 100 acres or 1,000 acres, you, do, you just add. Bonus, if you will. And that is a capacity carried by an earthly seed. Earthly. Now, we are talking about God's word, a seed planted in you. That idea that you are toying around, God has been telling you, sing that song. Sing that song. He put a song in you. Just like David. The reason why you see David has so many songs that we sing up today, the Psalms, because the songs were put by God. Yes, we can compose our own songs, but I wish you can get a song planted by God because when that song is planted by God, it will go places. Stop going to the studio and mixing some little rhymes over there to make your heart happy. Go before God and tell God, pour a seed. He can pour a small idea which he can expand. And I'm not saying any song that you sing is wrong. Any song, if you say, I love you, to a lady that you love, that you are married to, that is okay. But if you genuinely receive the true love of God and you say it again to that person, they will feel there is a difference. The love of God is different from that love because some of you are told, I love you. Or some people somewhere were told, I love you. And now the results they are seeing is 15 babies and the man is not there because the love was fake. Now if fake love can produce 15 babies, how much more the true love of God? <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. And God is not asking you to produce. Now listen to me. God is not asking you to produce. He's not asking you. You are not the producer. You are just the ground. Hallelujah. You are just the ground. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. He says, faithful is he that called you. He will also do it. All he's looking is for a ground. A ground. A ground. When Hitler wanted to produce an army of young men who he wanted to make sure that they followed all the orders, he was looking for wombs. 
He was looking for wombs because he, he wanted to produce something that was inside him. He had an idea. I want to produce an army that is like me. So he was looking for wombs, women who would carry a pregnancy to the end. And that child is given back to Hitler and is able to make a man out of that army a dangerous weapon. Let me tell you, the entire world is looking for a ground to start somewhere. They are looking. America today is feeding its people from some of the nations of Africa. Because Africa, they have not realized that they have a fertile ground. They look at the ground and they say nothing can come out of it. That person sees a fertile girl, comes and digs it up and plants some seed. And the same seeds are exported to another nation. Today we have a company that we know of. And they are doing a good job because they are, they are given employment. But now they export pineapples to all the nations of the world. There were people who were living there. They were attending goats and they're just walking around with goats. Two goats. And they didn't know that inside that land, acres and acres of land had potential to import pineapples, uh, import pineapples to all the parts of the world. So one person comes here, looks at the ground, just like the devil looks at your ground and says, this person does not realize what they are carrying. If I only can be able to get this man, I bring him my side, I put my seed, I can be able to produce something that these people do not know. Now God looks at you and sees potential. That is why he never gives up every Sunday. Every Monday, every Tuesday, there is a word coming your way. You see on WhatsApp, you read and you see uh, status. Unaona, John 10, 10. The thief comes, no. You go to the other one. Then you find, hey, so you say, I like this. So you receive laughter and it doesn't go any far. Because the first one you are like, ah, John 10, 10, I know it. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So uh -huh, let me go to another. So the whole day you keep on looking for things that will not yield anything. But the precious word, God is sowing seed every day. He is an extravagant farmer. He doesn't care whether it falls on the wayside, but he cares if only I can find a good ground that can produce like me. Faithful. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. Faithful is he that calls you. Who also will do it? God will do it. Amen. It is God will do it. God is only telling you, receive my word, protect it, watch how it will grow. Watch how it will produce. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now let us go to the same parable. The last group. Because you need to know how to produce. Now the Bible says, on verse 20, and those in the last group, you can use Amplified because today I have the Amplified movie. And those in the last group, that is the fertile ground, are the ones whom the seed was sown on the good soil. Good soil. And they hear the word of God. The good news regarding the way of salvation. They hear. Can we go to that? And those sown on the good, well-adapted soil are the ones who hear the word. Hear the word. Hear the word. Many of us are not hearing the word. We listen, but we don't hear. It passes you. So God says, if you want to know you are a good soil, they are the ones that hear the word. Because only by hearing is your faith provoked. The Bible says faith comes by doing what? Not listening. Many, all of you are listening. All of you are listening. But there are those who are hearing. There are those who are hearing. You are hearing something. Some of you are hearing this scripture belongs to me. Somebody else is saying, maybe. You are hearing, you are looking at me, you can listen. But you are thinking of what you are going to do after this. Some of you are thinking about Friday. Coming Friday. Some of you are thinking about next month. You're all hearing. You're all listening. But there's somebody who is hearing what God is saying. Because there's a word coming your way. And the Bible says that if you don't understand this parable, will you ever understand any other parable? Because this is the foundation of all the parables. So if you can't understand this, you have missed the, the entirety of understanding the parables of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 
The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1. Keep your foot. Keep your foot. In other words, dig in your foot when you go to church. Give your mind to what you are doing. When you go as Jacob to sacred Bethel, he went to lay something there. So the Bible says, keep your foot or give your mind to what you are doing. Give your mind. When you go as Jacob to the sacred Bethel, to the house of God, keep your foot. Don't be moved by anybody. Don't be distracted by anybody. For to draw near, for to draw near to hear, for to draw near to hear, don't come here to show off. Don't come here to see others. Don't come here to do anything else. Come here to hear. Draw near to hear. And to obey. And to obey. Because there is a difference between hearing and not obeying. And to obey is better than to give the sacrifice of fools carelessly, irrelevantly, too ignorant to know what they are, that they are doing evil. When you come to church and you can't hear the word of God, even if you are eating popcorn, make sure that your mind is on the word of God. Hallelujah. Even if you're eating popcorn. You know there are times when you, you know sometimes when you're seated near these kids and they start eating popcorns, you begin to hear through your nose the smell of popcorns. And you begin to imagine the way after this you're going to harvest those popcorns and eat them. Because you're hearing through your nose. There are so many ways of hearing. Hallelujah. There are people who begin in order to, like when the popcorns begin to be served on that side, especially to the small children, the, the, the teenagers and the preteens, their eyes shift. You know, all children always shift to where the food is. And most of the times they are looking and checking whether it's Aisha. So, and sometimes that's the way we are in church. You find we are so easily distracted. Instead of coming to the house of God, the Bible says, when you come to the house of God, come to hear. Because hearing is the, the entry to the good ground. The only way you hear, because we hear twice, we listen with our ears, but we hear with our heart. That word, you have to allow it to enter into your heart. For to draw near to hear and obey is better than to give the sacrifice of fools. To appear here and you never understood anything. Too ignorant to know that they are doing wrong. You need to understand that when you are seated here, you are seated in the presence of God and he is sowing seed. And these seeds are able to change your life. Let me tell you the truth. Because this seed that you are seated here listening to is the same seed that is being sown to somebody in America. The same seed is being sown to somebody in Europe. The same seed is being sown to somebody in Somali. The same seed is being sown to somebody in Brazil. The same seed is being sown to somebody somewhere in remote. But that person can be able to hear the seed, the word. They hear the seed. They receive that seed and suddenly their lives is changed. Now James chapter 5, 1 verse 19. The Bible says, let every man be swift to hear. Let every man. Let every man. The success of any student in school is not how well they attended lessons. It is how well they heard. The success of any student in any school, it is not how many lessons they attended. It is how well they heard. How well. And your D, your E, your C, your B, your A tells us how well you heard. You listened, yes, because the teacher said, listen. And so you listened, you heard. But when it entered inside the, the area of analysis, it was not understood. So God is talking about hearing, another word for hearing is understand what I'm saying. Because if you don't understand the word of God, it is already gone. It is already gone. It is already stolen. It will never yield results until you understand it. Hallelujah. Understand this. That's why the Bible says, understand this, my beloved brethren. What God is saying, I'm telling you out of love, let every man be quick to hear. Quick. That means by the time somebody is saying, quick to hear. Be quick to hear. 
a ready listener, slow to speak. We have too many. Sometimes we all speak too much. I have learned something. Let me tell you, I have learned something. When I go and I sit and I perceive there is somebody greater than me somewhere, I will not talk. I will organize my head and ask the relevant questions. There were times I used to be the speaker. You know, sometimes we feel nice when we know something. Who doesn't feel? You know, when you go and you're talking to people about counseling, you feel nice, you know something. They say something and you feel something. Like even it's like young men who love football. You, you want to know, you want people to know that yesterday you were watching the game. Then you even emphasize and you say, Kula pali me miss apple. Did you see the way the corner? There is a way they, they did you see? There's a strategy they used. Now you're trying to show that people that you saw better than them. And it is natural to all of us men. But I understood. I used to go to Cataloni. And I've shared this before. Let me tell you, I didn't know pride was welling in my heart. So I go to Cataloni, park, go to the room, and go to the prayer cube to pray. So you spend there a whole day praying. You read the Bible. God, you are just reading the Bible. And I would read and I would read. Then evening service comes. I sit and I, I look. The moment I see the pastor who has going to preach, I begin to analyze the dressing. <laughs> How is he walking? Then like, uh, that guy called, alikuwa naito nani? Alikuwa naito, is it Nathaniel? Can anything good come from Nazareth? That used to be my attitude. Lord, I came to listen to you. Now, I like the sermon. I will write a few notes, but I want you to talk to me in my cubicle alone because I want to hear your voice. I came to listen to your voice. And so, three days finishes, and you leave that place. The only thing you are carrying, because God did not speak to you on your own, the only thing that you are carrying is the statement that is usually written outside the gate. Yeah, yeah, Cataloni, that you have come to the prayer mountain. Your prayers are already answered. So you didn't hear anything. So you're just like, Lord, I know you answered my prayer. But I didn't hear. Until one day God rebuked me sharply. He said, I have packaged answers in those men that you are thinking they don't look like you. They don't talk like you. You are even correcting them. I have packaged answers. When you see a man chosen there to preach, it's because I have chosen him. And most of the answers are on that altar. And it changed. Everything changed in me. I would go and whether you come looking, you know there are people, I know there was like a clip that was shared by Nina some time back of a pastor who was, I think, jumping. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think it was so exciting. So, you know, sometimes when you have people like that one, you will be looking at the way they are jumping and listening to what they are saying. And so I looked and I was like, now I don't care. If he shouts, if he yells, I will be looking for what God is saying between the yelling. If he speaks so slowly, I will be looking for the answer because my answer. And I discovered the first day I go to Cataloni, even if I'm finishing three days, the answer, I would get it in the first day. And it would be in the man of God that is preaching. Some of us are too proud to receive. Too proud to receive. You keep on switching off. If you don't want to watch certain people, just don't even go looking for it. Bonas, if you will. And let me tell you, from that lesson, I learned to shut up. I sit down and I listen. We went somewhere, I think you were with Freddy. And we were with a certain bishop. And he was talking. And there were people who were talking, giving suggestions. Suddenly, he changed the mood, but many people never received it. I put my phone on. And I began to record. Because I knew the atmosphere has changed here. It has entered into a prophetic season. And he said, you that have been with me, I'm releasing the mantle. The mantle for the Pentecostal move in God. I'm releasing that mantle. The service was supposed to be the next day. But that midnight moment, the man began to release the mantle. And somebody else was just looking. By the way, yeah, you know, yeah, Bishop, that is a good idea. That's a good idea. And I remember he said to one person, are you listening? Are you listening? For me, I recorded it all. Because I was like, this is a moment. Many of us miss opportunities because we are too casual. We don't know when the word of God is coming. We are not quick to listen. I remember a certain lady and a certain gentleman. Sometime. We were coming out of church to Kyoko Chini. And Pastor Jane met them and told one of them, 
buy me a digestive biscuits. And she said, ah, digestive, only, digestive, that's all you want. Yeah, digestive biscuits. Okay. You too. And the other guy was smiling. I'm, I'm digestive. So one bought the digestives, brought. Because they perceived this is not a normal instruction. And the prophecy that was locked in in giving that suddenly was released to that person and doors opened in an amazing way. Doors opened. You know, I have met young men carrying speakers over here. And I tell them, you shall never carry a coffee, no. And they're like, hey, 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 hey. And they're not understanding. <laughs> they're not understanding that it's a prophetic moment. Because maybe yesterday you greet them, them and you told them, good the way you are carrying those speakers. But this moment you are releasing a word. But because they are not perceiving, they are not understanding, they are not quick to hear that this is a change. You should see us when we go to see our bishop, Bishop Alan and Pastor Kathy. When he begins to speak, we are on our knees because we know what a man of God speaks. Eli was speaking and talking to Hannah. He didn't even care what you are praying. And he said, your prayers are granted. Because Hannah was not speaking. And Eli, but Hannah was saying, he knew, if I can only hear the man of God say a word, I know. And she was like, God, speak to this man. Oh, go your way. Your prayers are granted. And the next thing, we see production. Samuel is born. So I'm not asking you to kneel down. I'm not asking. But don't, do, don't, do, don't be too casual. Don't be too casual. Because the word of God can come forth in from anywhere. Hallelujah. The word of God can come. Let me tell you, I never, and this is me, from the moment I understood about the power of men of God, no man of God will come my way and he will say, God bless you. And I take it in a casual way. My tone will change. Amen. Because I know there is a blessing that he's carrying and he has released at that particular moment. I capture it. Even if that person is lower than me. Because I know wherever they carry blessings. They carry blessings. If the shadow of Peter could heal, it was not healing everybody. It was people who were perceiving we are hearing God in this shadow. This shadow is speaking. Because God speaks in many ways. So they would put their sick and wait for the shadow because the shadow had a voice. And when the shadow passed, people were healed. The others who were looking and saying, Shadow, when did the first shadow heal? So we miss out on opportunities. So the Bible says, Understand this let every man be quick to hear, be a ready listener. Listener, be a listener. Let me tell you, even when I come here in the evening and, and Kim Lee is leading prayers. I don't come here as, as pastor now. I'm superior, father superior. Pastor does not come the same way, mother superior. She comes here and knows if this young man, she, he could have been led to lead a prayer today. That's my prayer. I pray when I'm standing behind there, I'm praying. If like I've, I've been given, because I'm looking, if that person has been given authority to stand over here, then I will perceive him to be the servant of God for that time. When Modaka was leading prayer, I don't look at him as my son here. I'm looking as a servant of God who is leading prayers at that time. When Michael is coming here and saying, hey, let us look at the scriptures. Sometimes he may, he, he, you know, Michael likes elaborating a little bit. And he will take a small walk. And then he'll come back here. I'm looking. Somebody else may be looking. He says, you are, you are, you are taking too long. And somebody, that time I'm like, there is something I'm ready to capture in that scripture because he's not there by mistake. Many of us we miss because of familiarity. Many of us we miss because we become too casual. God will not appear physically here. He uses men and he releases blessings through men. Buana asifiwe. Hallelujah. Be slow to speak. Because in our speaking sometimes we cancel the blessing. God spoke to Elizabeth and John. And John began to speak. And the angel touched him and made him dumb. Why? Because he, this guy will mess up this miracle. Shut up. He made him dumb until, 
I mean, not Zechariah, it was not John, Zechariah, until John the Baptist was born. That's when he spoke. If God was to touch people here, while on Ongiaga of your view, we would be finding people in church coming. They are trying to open their mouth. And, after service, we will put a midomos na funguka. Buanasifiwe. May you be slow to speak. Slow to take offense. Don't be a person who gets angry quickly. You hear the word of God. There's a time Timothy, I preached a sermon here and Timothy was making fun the next day. Pastor, today you are cutting. You are just cutting me with axes and swords and everything. You are just cutting me into pieces. But he was saying it in a nice way. Some people get angry. No, God, it is God who is talking to you. Amen. Slow to take offense. Slow to get angry in Jesus' name. So the, the first key to being a good ground is hearing. Amen. Can you say, Lord, help me to hear you? Lord, help me to hear you. In the midst of many voices. Lord, help me to hear you. In the midst of many voices. In Jesus' name. May he do so. Now the Bible says, they hear the word of God. We are back to verse 20. Mark chapter 4 verse 20. And accept it. That is the second condition. Accept. What is to accept? To accept is to receive. To receive. Today I was listening to John, John, is it Joseph Prince? In the morning I was coming here. And I was listening to something and I was like, I don't understand that. But I was accepting it. I was like, it is true. I don't understand it, but it is true. But I will go and look for a bigger, I, I will listen to that message again. Because the first time, you may not hear. The second time, you may hear it well. The Bible says, only the hearers and acceptors. Acceptors means, you know, like now there are so many people who are hearing that word. It is entering them. You can even give this sermon tomorrow. You can replicate it. But there are things you are not accepting. I don't agree with that. You may not agree with my opinion, but agree with the word of God. Because if you don't accept the word of God, something, you miss it. Accept the word of God. What does it mean? Receiving it as true. Receiving that word as true. Even if you don't understand it, look at it and say, this word is true. Lord, help me to understand. They receive it. They accept it. Number two to accept is to receive it as having the final authority. Final authority. Now we have people whose marriages are not working because they have refused to take the word of God as the final authority. The Bible will not change. It says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. I add this, that while they were yet sinners, he died for it. So while that woman is refusing everything that you are saying, continue to love her. Because Christ loved us to submission. Women, the Bible says, submit unto your husband as to the Lord. That means anytime you look at Mr. Ngomoto, you look at him in the face, don't see Ngomoto, see the Lord. Hallelujah. See the Lord. Submit. So when he said, get me a cup of tea, go get it like you have seen the Lord. Cook the tea. <laughs> Take it back to the Lord. I know there is somebody now sitting down here saying, my husband is not <laughs> like that. Who your wangu? No, as long as he say who your wangu, then you cannot be able to get the results that God has intended for your marriage. Hallelujah. The Bible says, obey your husband in everything. Everything. Paul has a pesa. The Bible says, in what? Can you say everything? Lady, say every. Say everything again. Say everything again. It's actually the children. The girl child, and I say my everything. Everything. He even when he tells me to wash them, I obey him in everything. Lord, that one, speak to me again. Now, can I speak to you again in everything? Hallelujah. 
So you must accept the word of God as true, as accurate, as authoritative. Hallelujah. That is a reality. It will not change. Try to negotiate with God. You know, Lord, you understand my pay. You know, my rent is 5000 I get 7000 So if I remove tithe, 700 Unakakuletia mungu na mwambia, it gets now 6300 Now, if I pay rent, which is 5000 Lord, I will remain with 1300 Now, you know very well, Lord, 1300 cannot take us for four weeks. So, Lord, what I'm suggesting, this, the tithe that was supposed to give you 700, nikopeshe. <laughs> Nikope? when you increase me. Now God looks at you because he cannot take the money from you. And that's why the Bible calls that you have robbed me. You know, robbing is taking violently something that God has got no ability here on earth to take that money. You are the only one who has control of it. So that is robbery. So God looks from us and he's not sad. He just looks and says, I'm so sad that you have robbed me the opportunity to open the windows of heaven that will have stretched this 1,300 that has remained to fit your whole month. Hallelujah. When you are opening school this term, we always give a fast fruit. Fast fruit is any fee that is paid by a student. Any student. Alipe Kwanza. Now, when the student paid, the amount was just enough for electricity. Now, the KPLC had called me the day before, told me, we are here to cut. Then I told him, give us time, we'll pay. I didn't even know when the money will come. Now, God sent somebody who paid exactly what we needed for electricity. Somebody has said amen. It was exactly, say my exactly. But we also have an agreement with God for fast fruit. So it was also the fast fruit. So I looked, electricity, itakatwa leo if I don't pay. And God is waiting for his fast fruit. So I know from the past, from what we have lived with pastor, that uh, we can talk to God, but he will not respond back. So God was waiting. I organized very quickly. I actually wrote a check very quickly of the same amount. And I gave it out. Gave it out as a fast fruit. Very quickly, Now, the, the, the people of electricity, and I thank God, Kenya Power, if you are listening, God bless you. They didn't come back until now when we opened school, because the first fruit came when the schools were closed. Now, by the time they came back, they are finding we have money and we are paid. God has already sorted it out. I was sharing with these people, as you are waiting, because God sometimes looks. Somebody called me from UK and he said, we want just to support that school with some books. And they sent some money. In fact, it landed on Friday. And I was just looking, what if I had refused fat f fast fruit to release the fast fruit? Because what was sent was several times even the fast fruit. Because we need to agree that it is the final. What God says is final. Let us not negotiate with God that God, you understand my position. You understand what I'm going through. Yes, he understands. But he says, the condition to get you out of that is obedience exactly to my word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. To accept also means to possess the word of God. Possessing that word of God. Let that word become yours. That by the time I'm seeing you tomorrow and I'm asking you, what word did you receive from God? You are able to say, Mark chapter 4 verse 20. It says this, or whichever other verse, possess it. Agree with it. Delight in that word. Because when you delight in the word of God, it will bring you results. All this God is talking about the good ground. You hear the word, you accept it, and then something begins to happen after those two steps. The Bible says, accept the same is as welcoming it, and now bear fruit bearing of fruit bearing of fruit when you hear the word of god and you accept it as true the next thing it becomes 
an automatic miracle of bearing fruits. Now, women who are here, you cannot understand how a child grows in the womb. But when nine months come, the one, the God who put that child in the womb brings a fruit out. Hallelujah. You didn't do anything big. How kuosha huwe mtoto? How kumlisha? You, you are just eating. Maybe sometimes two, two quantities. Unakula, you know, some of you begin to have some strange appetites for stones and walls. You find women up country, they have eaten an entire wall because of carrying a baby. But at the end of the day, whether you eat that wall or you don't, that child, something is happening. God is making that child grow in the stomach. And when nine months have come, you can't stop it. You can't stop it. When nine months have come, whether you are in a bus, whether you are being carried by a donkey, whether you are in the toilet, whether you are in the supermarket, whether you are walking on the road, whether you are in the bush, whether you are being chased by a lion, that child will say, I'm coming out because my time has come. Buenas if you were. They will come out because when you carry God to full term, you can't stop him. He will come out and he comes out big. Hallelujah. That is what happens. Carry the word of God to the end. Abide with that word of God. Hold on to that word of God. Eventually when the time comes for the word of God to give birth, you don't give birth. I thought it is women who give birth until I discovered, you know, I was wondering what is this thing called push. It is God who orchestrates a rhythmical push that you have to walk with it. It is God doing it. If you go to the bush and find elephants giving birth, you will realize how, how godly it is that woman, you have nothing to do with the giving of birth. In fact, it is God who gives you signal on when to push if there is a pushing. Me, I used to think that you are told to push like this. But God has created a miracle within. Hallelujah. A miracle that you cannot be able to understand. Let me tell you, when the time <laughs> when the time of God comes for you to give birth, you will feel pain. And let me tell you, some of you are feeling pain because you are about to give birth of the miracle that you have been carrying. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are feeling pain because there is a miracle about to be born. You have been carrying the word of God. You have been holding on to that word of God. It has become heavy. It has become big. And now they are mocking you. Now they are making fun of you. Now you are so broke. Now you are going through things. You are going through emotional pain, physical pain, spiritual pain. And God is telling you, it is a rhythm that is beginning to come. So that you can begin to push. Begin to push in prayer. Because many of us, if a woman does not collaborate with God and push when God orders the push, that child may not be born. It may be a stillbirth. It may be a dead child. But when you feel the pain, that is the time you begin to push. Buona asifiwe. Hallelujah. Buona asifiwe. Wakati konyumbani nolosikia unaumwa, umepitia pagumu, that is not the time to sleep. That is the time to wake up because God is telling you, I am, I have, you, you received the word a few months ago. You received the word two years ago. Now I'm about, I want you to give birth, but you have to push with me. There are things I want you to pray. Go and pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And as you begin to pray, God begins to do something. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us read Mark chapter 4 verse 26. And I finish with that. Mark chapter 4 verse 26. He still wanted to qualify the first parable. Then he said, the kingdom of God, verse 26, is like a man who throws seed on the ground, on the ground, on the ground. Now you are the good ground. And he goes to bed at night and gets up every day. And in the meantime, the seed sprouts and grow. How it does this, he does not know. Hallelujah. And then continue sleeping and rising night and day while the seed sprouts. Let me tell you, the word of God you received at the beginning of the year, the word of God that you received three years ago, you may not know, but it is still growing. It is still growing. It is still growing. You may not feel it, but it is the seed, it is not you who causes the seed to grow. All God wants is a ground. The moment the seed hits the ground, it knows how to grow. Pastor one day shared a testimony that they planted seeds, maize. Wakio wadogo. Then the next day, wakaifukua. Kuangalia kama inamea. Wakaona ijaanza kumea, wakaifunika. 
Then they, after two days, they went again. After three days. So they went on like that until one day they found it is actually not growing. Why? Because you are refusing the opportunity. You are not giving the seed the opportunity to do what it likes doing. Let me tell you, God knows how to bring you into where you think you want to be. God knows how to bring that car into your life. God knows how to bring a wife into your life. God knows how to bring a husband into your life. God knows how to give, bring that business into your hands. He knows. All he wants is to receive the seed. Take care of that seed. Speak it. Meditate on it. Pray on it. Rising night and day while the seed sprouts and grows and increases. Sprouts and grows. Are you seeing anywhere the, the ground is being mentioned? The seed is doing it. It's just working itself out. And increases. He knows not how. The problem unaenda kushinda ukifukua. Unaenda kufukua. Mungu alikuambia atakupatia kazi hiyo kampuni. Unashinda ukirudi hapo. Eh Mungu anakuambia wait. I will tell you when the time is come when you will go to the delivery room. Just wait for me. Because I can tell you now I'm working on a few things. But a time is coming when I will be able to produce. Then verse 28. Look at verse 28. The earth. You are that earth. The earth produces by itself. Say by itself. The earth produces at acting by itself. First the blade. Then the ear. Then the full grain in the ear. The earth produces crop by itself. And there is a process. The ear, the blade, the ear, then the full grain in the ear. The challenge that we have when God is beginning, you see the blade. You see the blade and you go and pluck it out thinking it was the ear, the full, and it was not. And all God wants you is to trust his word. Amen. And whatever he tells you to do, do it. A word was spoken to Mary and the people who had the wine. The miracle was supposed to be for that day. That means the process for that miracle was supposed to be the same day. So that means the word they received could be able to produce the same day, the blade, the ear, and the full grain. But they had to do something for God to do. They told, put the ear, I mean, put the water in the pots. The moment they put the water in the pots, because they received, they had the word. They were told, put. And so they put. So they had. They accepted the instruction. Then they were given the second instruction. Go and draw from the pot. When they drew from the pot, they discovered it is wine. Why? The process had been quickened. I am not saying that the word of God will not work now. But make sure you are not the one who determines when the word of God will work. The seed knows how to grow by itself. The seed knows how to produce the blade by itself. The seed knows how to produce the ear by itself. The seed knows how to produce the full harvest by itself. It doesn't need your help. God does not need your help. He only requires your cooperation. He only requires your participation. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Amen. Do it. You can't understand how putting 10% in these baskets begins to create a roller coaster of events that moves all the way to America and somebody calls you and tells you, I've got like $2,000 for you. You can't understand. But your work is to obey the word of God. Do what God tells you to do. He knows how to do the rest. There are people here who have lost so many opportunities of receiving the word of God and therefore they have missed so many opportunities of harvest. I want us to rise up today because God has got so many miracles that missed. And we read the word today in the book of Luke that when you are given a seed 
and you don't handle that small seed, then, and multiply that seed, then even what you have will be taken away. There are people who have lost opportunities. You come to the house of God, you listen, but you don't hear. You listen, but you don't understand. Your faith is not growing. Because when God gave you a seed of the word of God, you treated it without honor. You never knew the potential. Can I tell you, it was one man carrying a bag of seed who stepped into Ghana carrying a, a bag of cocoa seeds into Ghana. But today Ghana is the leading exporter of cocoa. One bag of seed. He knew what he was carrying. If only you can begin taking the word of God seriously. And that's what we have been talking about. Esteeming the word of God seriously. He knew this bag. I will protect it. I will go with it wherever I go. But I know I'm going to Ghana. I know the soil there. The ground there is good. I have analyzed it. And I'm going to plant these seeds in Ghana. When he planted those seeds, he took care of the seeds. And today... Ghana, Ghana is exporting, the leading exporter of cocoa. Now God is saying, the seed I give you, if only you can esteem it the way I have given it to you, take care of it, you will be feeding many others. Because today you cannot stop anybody who wants to grow cocoa in Ghana. The first person can say, cannot say I have control of that, that cocoa. He does not have control. It ran out of control. But he himself, and if his family is still there, he's still enjoying the blessing of that cocoa. Why? Because God wants to put a seed in you. He wants that seed to grow out of you. And when you begin to produce harvest, you will begin to affect others in many generations. Are we together? That is why the Bible says in Psalms 112, verse 1 and 2, Blessed is the man that fears God. Hallelujah, greatly. Blessed is the man that fears God. Hallelujah, you can put the New King James Version. Blessed is the man that fears God. Who delights in the commandments, greatly in his commandments. Then verse 3 says, his seed, his descendants will be mighty on earth. This person just did two things. He feared God. That means when he hears the word of God, he respects it. Then he delighted in the seed that was planted in him. And the next thing, his descendants will be mighty on earth. There is no struggling. There is nothing. Your children will become mighty on earth. The generations, the generations of the that fear God, the generation of those that delight in the word of God, the generations of those that protect the seed of the word of God in them, their children will be mighty. Mighty means they will be people of substance, people of renown. People who will be mentioned in places. Hallelujah. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Today, Don. Modaka has been on TV. Too. Don has never been on TV. Being interviewed. But what has taken him there? Not his college degree. What has taken him there? Not his cooking mandazis. What has taken him there, not arranging that equipment, what has taken him there is a deposit of the word of God in him. Because when you protect the seed of the word of God in you, it will take you far. Hallelujah. It will surpass your generations. His descendants will be mighty on earth. So if you are here and you are disrespecting the word of God, you are hindering your descendants to be mighty. God did not say anything about those children doing anything. I have said here before, Kim Kardashian, even if you say, Awachwe na nasijui na nani, na nani, let me tell you, she'll continue being mighty. Why? The grandfather is the one that started, the, the great grandfather is the one that started the full gospel businessman fellowship that is all over the world, bringing men back to God. Now God is a covenant keeping God. He told David, my covenant with David will not fail. As long as the earth, as long as the sun rises every day, then my covenant with David will remain intact. What is that covenant? He has said, you being a child of David, then you will be mighty on earth. Now, if you can also hold on to the words of God, your descendants will be mighty. Some of the prayers you are praying, so much prayers, will work on themselves. The generation of the upright will be blessed. That means the whole line, assuming this is a mother, grand mtotowake, mtoto wa mtotowake, this line yote, ule jamaa wa musho pale, kama uyu ndi alikuwa, kiti ya kwanza uyu ndi alikuwa the, the mother or the matriarch, ule mtoto anapata, anafanya kazi, anabarikiwa. Anashindua, why am I doing business and it is prospering? 
Why is it so easy for? Because our God is a covenant keeping God. He will never break his covenant. Hallelujah. The last verse, the Bible says in verse 3, wealth. Just honor God. Protect the seed that is in you. Wealth and riches. Can we read together? One, two, three. One, two, three. Will be where? Will be where? Na kuambi utakuwa ukiweka pesa kwa nyumba. Kwa sababu bank is machine wa kuhando. Mbwana wasifiwe. Wealth and riches will be in his house. That means, wewe kwa nyumba yako mtakuwa mebarikio. Watoto wana mali. Watoto wa watoto wako wana mali. Watoto wa watoto wa watoto wako mna mali. Munaambiwa sijui kuna nani ya sijui kuna mmoja anataka kwenda Amerika unasema ticket ni melipa e, hoteli ni melipa nguo zake za kukaa Amerika ni melipa kila kitu when one of you dies at a good old age 120 you don't call people from you just inform them you give a pay bill for anyone who wants to connect with the blessing in your family because you can bury without having to call anybody bwana asifiwe wealth and riches might not it is not may. It is will. Will means there is no negotiation. Utapata utakuwa mdosi. Let me tell you, all of you here, if you only decide to take the word of God seriously and begin to honor God, that when you receive the word of God, you treat it with honor. Hold on to it. Nurture it. Let me tell you, a time is coming, you'll be looking around and you'll be saying, I don't know what is happening. But my account is just growing. Hallelujah. I don't know what is happening. My children's account are just growing. I've been tr trying to ask them whether I can help them with anything. Then they're saying, mom and dad, we are okay. They will begin to bring you cars. They'll begin to bring you aeroplanes. And God will change. Let us rise up on our feet. I want us to pray. Now, if you look at your life, you have lost many seeds. Now, how many of you can be able to say, I have lost many seeds? I have lost many. I received many, but I lost many. Today, we are talking to a God of another chance. Can you say another chance? We are going to pray to God. Lord, give me another chance with your seed. Hallelujah. That is the only prayer. That is the only prayer God is saying. Give me another chance with your seed. I will not treat it the way I've treated it before. And watch what God will do. Can you open your mouth? Tell God, Lord, give me another chance. Hallelujah. Open your mouth. Worship team, you can come here as you're praying. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and just tell God, give me another chance. I have wasted. I have wasted so many of your seeds. You have sent prophecies my way. You have sent prophecies my way. You have sent sermons my way to change my life. You have spoken particularly for me. You have, taken, you have spoken to me directly. You have given me a word. You have given me a word that was so personal. But I have played around with it. Give me another chance. Open your mouth and tell God, give me another chance. Give me another chance. I will not waste your seed. I will